Okay, so welcome back to Talking Therapy. I'm back with um, Livio. Uh, and uh, we had an interesting chat about a month or maybe a couple of months ago. And so I thought it would be nice. He's got some questions and we just discuss a little bit. You know, he's also working as a somatic therapist, essentially. And uh, he will tell you a little bit about that. And then we will have a bit of a chat and maybe some of the questions are also useful to you uh, because it's, 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 People like this stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay, Livio. So maybe introduce yourself again and just say a little bit what you do. And <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Deborah. Uh, thanks for the second call. Very happy about it. Um, well, I, we got to know each other because I write on Substack as much as you do. Um, I write for people um, like a, some readers define it a mindset newsletter for analytical people. And so I try to provide some what is working for me to overcome some of the imposter syndromes I have and decision-making paralysis and in the end move forward. Mm. And um, what brings us here is that I'm also, as you mentioned, somatic practitioner and working with people that are going some, through some sort of meaning crisis. Um, and no, and I use a combination of body work techniques or with ra rational thinking. And here the, the questions I have are around Maybe how we can integrate breath words, how we can integrate bioenergetics uh, in a one-on-one -on -one work. I um, mean, with, with which stage, etc. Mm, mm, cool, cool. Well, um, let's just go. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, jump in straight, straight away. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we talked about breath words last time because of your last book. Mm -hmm. Um. And right here on breathwork, particularly, but I'm more interested in general in breathwork practice, obviously uh, the one you consider more relevant. And and I'm wondering, um, what is what is a basic intervention using breathwork with a client? Uh, maybe also if it's a client that has not a lot of experience with breathwork, with the body work in general. Compared with someone who has more, I don't know if that's a variable that can help too. Well, I get, you know, I guess how I see things, I was going to say these days, but probably for quite a long time is that many clients in the West are coming from this very, you know, like you mentioned, very analytic mindset and, you know, this kind of over-reliance on kind of propositional, computational logic and putting things in categories and everything must be semantic. And then it gives them a sense of order in their world, but then something is missing. You know, they can't maybe feel or they don't feel meaning. They feel like a bit robotic or, or whatever. And then as I see it, these guys need to break through essentially because the reason they've adopted in, in a way this kind of very robotic mindset is, I mean, it's partly cultural, I'm just going to close the window a sec. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's partly cultural because we're brought up in the West and that's our culture, you know. It, it is very thinking based, particularly in Northern Europe or North, North America. And partly because it serves to keep repressed feelings and, and, and the experience of trauma held within the body, held in the fascia and the muscle system. And so how I tend to see it is like almost three rings, you know, like there's this outer ring of just thinking, thinking and logic. And then inside there, there's this, this feeling of deep, intense emotion that's been repressed. And if you, can, if you can work through the emotionality and feel it, then you come to a kind of space of presence or being on, on the inside. But for, to, to really answer your question, most clients who are coming, who are trapped in this outer ring, all they can mm -hmm. do is think. They can't really access their emotions. They don't have much sense of the body. Then they have to get some kind of breakthrough experience. And then breath work can be very useful for this. But of course, when you're dealing with a client, you know, you have to find the way that they open, you know, and that's tricky because they probably won't know. They may have some, you know, vague kind of intuitive uh, ideas. But you have to find what works for them and it may work for them to do to be very gentle and to have someone simply talk about their parents and they slowly open up and they start to access feelings or whatever they or they may want to go in maybe if their mind is super rigid that just doesn't work for them psychotherapy and so you try and go in through the body 
basically to try and stir up emotion and feeling in the body and break through this layer so they can start to feel some of the stuff that's held inside. And so breath work can be useful for this because when you start to breathe in this kind of different way, like connected breath, so there's, there's no gap between the in breath and the out breath, what happens is you start to enter a slightly altered state of consciousness, rather like you might take, you know, it's not the same as taking ayahuasca or mushrooms or something like that, but it's a little bit similar. You know, even when Stan Groff came to America and wanted to work with uh, LSD because he was, he was a pioneer in Europe with LSD therapy. He came to America that had just been seventies. I think it had just been banned. And so he started to develop this thing called um, holotropic breath work you know, because you realize that it could get a similar effect. And the benefit is that it takes the client out of their habitual kind of very rigid mind state. And then they can start to access feelings, emotions, and have a deeper sense of the body. So that's one clear, you know, way that you can use breath work in when you're working with clients. You know, you can just guide them into this for like an hour, hour and a half session, and then give them some, you know, including some integration time. And, and then they start to have an experience of going through that and going into the kind of inner layer of the, of the world. And it, and it and increases their sense of meaning and allows them to start to understand that they can access more emotional depth. They can feel their body more. So that, that's one clear way that you can use many different breathwork techniques, whether it's rebirthing, holotropic, some shamanic techniques or, you know, Reikian breathwork. You know, but, but to break through that the hardened layer that many, many Westerners carry around. Mm. And, and how would you bring it in? I'm wondering is more like, because from my own experience, breathworks can have different types of use. One is more like calming stress release, maybe typically short sessions that they really clear, clear up your mind. And then can get pretty much more trippy <laughs> if you land if it's longer and with different patterns. I'm wondering uh, in the case we are describing of a client which is a bit detached or like still I mean, in the outer layer you described. Um, how would you approach an, an intervention in, in one of the first sessions? You would go for something shorter. You would go for something longer. I know it's 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 contextual, but I'm just trying to understand what are the variables in the. Yeah, I mean, the, the main variable for me personally is like, if someone is very detached from the body, you know, like they're really the classic kind of schizoid personality from, from Reich, you know, then you have to be a little bit careful with breath work or with any kind of, you know, because these days, I think in America, you can take psilocybin or something like this, you know, in a proper legitimate psychological setting. Yeah. But you have to be a little bit careful that they don't just go off into their head even further and, and don't actually access the feelings. Because the, the underlying issue is not so much the conscious mind and our behavior and our thinking, it's our nervous system. And whether genetically or through learning, the nervous system of someone who is quite dissociated from the body has learned that when there's any form of slightly scary stimuli, okay, let's get out of here, get out of here. And that process is actually not mediated consciously. It's not the fault of the conscious mind of the dissociated person. It's being mediated unconsciously. So, you know, you have to, that, that's really the art here. You're working with this nervous system and finding out, okay, how can I keep this person in the body? Maybe, you know, it can be something like even holding someone's hand, giving some level of gentle reassurance whilst they do a breath work technique. So that's the main consideration. You don't, you see, you just don't know with these techniques. You can say like, you know, we just do a short one or we just do a little bit or something like that. And that's okay to give it, to give it an experiment, but you, you don't know for sure what will, what, what will happen with someone. A lot is to do with the nervous system. And I think until there's a deeper understanding of, 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 of why these defensive responses or why an individual has specific defense responses the way they do, you know, if we get to that point, you know, then I think we can calibrate our therapy much better to the client. What tends to happen in psychology is that anything that's wrong is kind of blamed on you and that you, you know, your thinking and behavior is off, which is in a sense is true, but it's not really the client's fault. And so people get stuck in this kind of loop 
of self-blaming. I couldn't stay present. Uh, I'm just back in my oral side or I'm enduring again or whatever. Mm. And they self-blame and they get in a negative loop and it doesn't really move anywhere. And actually, it's not the client's fault that they're doing these things. There may be times when they could have a, they have a choice. They could bring themselves back to the body and feel, or they can stay in their abstract world. But that, that's the main thing for me with, with breath work in particular. Or, you know, I don't, I don't work with, with, with Ibogaine or, or psilocybin mm -hmm. or anything mm -hmm. like that. I, I do know a bit about those drugs, particularly Ibogaine, but I don't work with those with clients. But you know, it's the same kind of problem. You know, you've got people going off when you want to bring them back and it's not their fault they're going off. Hmm. So in a sense, uh, if I had to draw some, um, say some consequence of this would mean that I would say, so if that's the thing and if that's what, what could happen, uh, in a sense, we need to get to, uh, me as, as, as a coach, as a, prof, as a practitioner, needs to get the client to a point in which I feel confident in experimenting with wet breath work, for instance. And even at that point, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but it might not be very wise to start with something like that with a client, which is seem to be more in, in the la outer layer, but rather understand first uh, how so his mind work or how his nervous system reacts. Is that... Is that a, a fair assumption or? Well, kind of, yeah. I mean, what I what I usually do is just talk to the client about it. You know, you, you, you talk to them, you know, you say, look, we, we, we can go for some breath work because people are coming, if they come to me, they're going to be coming for bio or some yeah. like stuff or that. That's why they're going to come. So they're not coming for regular psychotherapy anyway. You know? mm -hmm. so I'm not a licensed psychotherapist, but I will say to them, you know, we can go with this stuff with breath work in particular, bio, it's more holding you in the day-to-day -day awareness, you know. But with breath work, you're going into an altered state of awareness. You can explain this to the client. Say, going into an altered state of awareness, you may just dissociate more. And that's the risk. And it'll be the risk with, with any kind of, you know, shamanic intervention or whatever. And then let them think about that and see if they want to try it. So you might be able to, you might be able to go gently. I might be able to hold your hand. Or you have to just do if you want to try it we can try it but that's the main thing to watch out for just going off into your mind right right yeah 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 makes total sense and you mentioned bioenergetics in in this sense is is different um yeah how how, how can you elaborate on that a little yeah i mean well breath work you you are lying down and you know and you're lying down with your eyes closed and you're breathing in a certain way that will take you into an altered state of consciousness and that's the main mechanism by which the technique works not quite so much with reiki and breath work but with the other ones we just mentioned yeah. with bio, you know you're standing up you're in a position you've got your eyes open most of the time it's completely different it's not taking you into an altered state of consciousness that's why i tend towards the bio particularly to begin with anyway mm -hmm. you know hmm Clients come with their own intuitive desires of what they want to try. So, you know, I also facilitate that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I found personally that still with bioenergetics, you can get in altered state of consciousness, but it's more as a consequence of the all let go that can happen for which you can be left very raw, maybe after like 45 minute session and that, that can happen. But yeah, it's, it's not a direct consequence of the process in which you are more present, more active. Right. Well, I don't know exactly. I mean, I don't know how you measure these things, but <laughs> certainly with breath work, because it is more passive, you know, yeah. uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You, you do it, its main way of functioning is by taking you out of the uh, of your day to day consciousness. And with bio, it's more that it's opening up certain muscle groups in the fascia. And then, yes, feelings are starting to come up. You're trying to feel your body. It could leave you feeling very raw. It could leave you feeling very angry later in the day, you know, uh, suppressed emotions coming up. But as I see it, and because we don't have a way of measuring these things, really, it's not so much taking you out of your day-to-day -day consciousness. Yeah. You know, most people coming out of, say, a 40-minute bio session could probably function quite well within a few minutes. Most people coming out of a 45 minute re rebirthing session could not function very well for like at least half an hour or so, you know, because you have to come back to this normal day to day awareness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a very good way to, to put it to, to a very good um, 
criteria to use this topic of day-to-day -day awareness to understand where the two 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 interventions stand for me. So I, I keep it in mind. Mm. And, and instead, I'm wondering if you instead look at bioenergetics at this point. I'm, I'm still coming back in my, you know, again as a somatic practitioner, and I'm understanding what I can use, what not. Um, if you are early in the relationship with the client, um, which type of bioenergetics intervention could 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 be more relevant, could feel more relevant in, in general? I mean, usually what I do is I get them, I ask them to complete my, uh, you know, Reiki and character structure quiz online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that will give them a result that kind of gives you these percentages. It probably isn't perfect, but it gives you a rough idea. What are your dominant types? And so from that information, so then the client, you know, I like to have a client on board as much as possible, you know, so that gives them an understanding a bit, you know, and I will explain a bit what that means, but they're, you know, they're oral wounding or they're a massive endurer or dissociated or aggressive, whatever, you know, I explain all that. And then I look to calibrate a session based around, you know, their age, their issues, their weight and their character structure, you know. So, uh, you know, if someone who's super in the endurer, I will explain to them that the thing will be to try and break through and start to access anger, which has been suppressed, you know, and, and, and someone's, and so we'll look at, you know, techniques which can help them do that. And there'll be free flowing discussion about it, you know, so they're on board with it. You know, I don't, I try not to be too much, you know, like, you know, when I'm leading workshops, you have to be the boss, you know, because you're holding space for people and they need to trust you that you're holding. But when you're running a one to one session, it's more like there's discussion and you want to try that. And I support, you know, it's like so it's not so much me, the, the boss therapist, giving them the client the thing, but the positions are a little bit kind of not so hierarchical. So, that you know, then we discuss some some techniques I usually demonstrate the techniques if it's on zoom you can record that part and then they go away and they practice those techniques you know daily or five times a week basically and so it's calibrated towards the character structure plus yeah. the age and weight of the client this kind of thing mm. Mm. yeah I found um I mean, this, this is not bioenergetics but for instance something I found use, useful or clients found useful in sessions is for instance exercises to release if very simple exercises it might just be you know just to release the jaw to release the neck uh when you know i see we're online and i see they're holding a lot of uh like they may be mentioned and then you can see and I'm, i was wondering you know along these lines if there was something super simple that can be adapted but i guess your approach is more contextual depending on the character type yeah and 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 also taking into account you know that when you come from this mechanistic mindset you know i get a lot of clients like that or people on my support channel or whatever you know and they mm. all want to know exactly how the emotion works to which muscle and <laughs> put themselves into a little box you know and it is just not like that you know when you work with something like the bow and arch there aren't specific i mean they're muscle groups that they work but it's not it's not like that so you can release, you know, it's like going for a massage. You can go for a massage, deep tissue massage. It's really great. You have an hour and a quarter or whatever. Three days later, you're back like you were before. There's a reason for that. You're not compartmentalized. You can't just de-stress, you know, that it's a process and it's a psychological process. You know, you have to be engaged with it. So it's like, is the client coming just to get rid of some stress and get functional again for a, a week or something like that? Or are they coming because they actually want to know what's going on inside of them? I get clients, for, for example, who have been, you know, who will every once a month will cry their guts out, but they have no clue what it's about. But it just keeps on going like that, but if they have no clue because they're not psychologically engaged with themselves and of course sometimes we do have emotions and we don't know what they're about but when you habitually release emotions without any you know understanding of what's happening inside there's a block there as well it's a little bit different but it's kind of similar you know it's like just releasing stress is not you know of course it's good if you've been super stressed and you're rigid as fuck you know releasing stress is great but it's going to come back because your habitual mental thinking and behaviors are just moving the same so that program will just boot up again and a few days later we all know it you know we all went for some wonderful massage where they really grind everything out of you and that kind of stuff i used to do it all the time 
of itself, it's not going to do much. It's just a way to de-stress de for a bit and then you go back next week or two weeks later and you do it again. Yeah, and when do, when do you think the shift is? Um, because you mentioned under, I'm under, it's about understanding or it's about consistency in the, pra in, in the um, practice, let's say. Two factors, yeah. One, consistency, discipline in the practice that you're doing it. Another second fact is I want to know who I am. If you just if you just think, okay, I just want to de-stress, yeah, you know, it ain't gonna fucking happen. Oh, it's unlikely. There's no exact rules, it's unlikely yeah. to happen. You have to say, I want to know who I am, I want to know what's going on inside of me. You know? If you don't have that, that's a block. You know, it is like it's a block to accessing your inner world. And if you can't access your inner world, it's very hard, you know. It's like all you can do is like use a massage or a technique like a drug, like a drug to take your problem away without you having to really understand it. You know, and it doesn't really work. I mean, the whole core of psychotherapy in many ways is to get the client to engage with their inner world. You know, to talk about, you know, their relationship with their mom, their dad, teachers, lovers, whatever, and relate that to how they are ongoing in their thinking and their behavior. You know, that is psychotherapy. It's about going into your inner world. And when we bring the body in, we just have an extra little way to 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 get some of that tension and some of that unhealthy linkage out. It's That's very... why I don't even work specifically with tension so much. People come to me with, mm. I've got this really tense back and mm. really tense neck, and I want to know an exercise that can get rid of it. I'm not really, I'm not really going to bother with them so much. I, well, I would explain to them, but it does not work like that. You can't take yourself out of the healing process. You have to come <laughs> into the healing process. It's very interesting what you mentioned, because what I'm understanding is like discipline and intention in a sense, you know? Uh, yeah. so the intention to, to go deeper and it's interesting what I see in my own process is that I reach the point in which trying to understand what I'm over analytical so as you as you can imagine from some of the questions I'm trying to put things in boxes so mm -hmm. what I'm what I found at some point I reached a point in which trying to understand what was going on was actually being detrimental to the process so there was the intention to 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 be more free more alive that's probably how i would define it now but try to understand but i was trying to understand the causes sometimes very much related to the body sometimes more related to the past and i i found that actually letting go of this which took years uh even just to realize it it's actually been beneficial now mm. uh, so the intention is still there but I'm less interested in understanding the reasons. I'm actually more trusting that the process will bring me somewhere as long as I keep with the discipline and the intention to be better in a sense. I don't know how that sounds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, well, that's it. You know, when, when we say self-knowledge, it's not just like some solid thing like, OK, my mama did not give me enough affection when I was six months old and she used to leave me over here when she went with her friends or whatever. And now I am like this, you know, that is like, just simple propositional semantic knowledge that you import in your brain. That is not self-awareness. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's useful to understand and make those connections, but that is not self-awareness. You know, awareness is, okay, that's an issue as an adult that I'm carrying around. How am I going to work through that so I'm no longer hindered by it, you know? Yeah, it's much broader, probably also felt. It's, it's and... internal, you know, it's internal. A lot of what I mean, a lot of what we're doing and a lot of what we were doing in the Osho scene, you know, it's just trying to bring people into a space where they can start to realize they have an inner world. You know, that was the whole thing. You know, everyone is out in this rigid, rigid form. And it's like and, and they're trying mechanistically to understand everything and put it in boxes and blah, blah, blah. And you're you're just putting them into an environment where hopefully something deeper can happen where they get touched. And then it's like, wow, I want this. You know, I bet they start to get presence. They start to understand the heart. Maybe they feel their gut. They share the sheer level of emotion inside. You're trying to bring people back. You know, our culture has gone into a very mechanistic, robotic, computational kind of way of functioning. And you're just trying to start to bring people back because that's what happened to me. I was in a completely robotic state of functioning mm -hmm. and I went to the Osho people because that was the most confrontational thing I could, could think of. 
because to be robotic and in your mind in Yosho scene 20 years ago was like the worst thing you could be. You know, it was like the worst thing you could be. Obviously, you're working for a bank, then it's fine to be in your mind. You don't, it doesn't matter, you know. But if you're an Osho community, no, it cannot be in your mind. So it was super challenging to be constantly, constantly brought back to my feelings and my and and my body. It's interesting you mentioned because last last talk, last time we talked, there is something that uh, stayed with me. We talked about getting in contact with the heart. And we talked about getting in contact with the guts or the belly in a sense. And, and you mentioned it now, that's why I'm bringing it up. Um, and I remember you saying something, but these are my words, not yours, that is like, in a sense, I got the feeling that the more you go closer to the guts, the deeper you are. So as if being in the heart is not, uh, I mean, the goal is to go even deeper, and that means going in in this, in a sense, in the middle of the body, in the stomach. I don't know how, how you can comment on that. If my question is even clear, yeah. Well, I mean, something I saw from being around the Osho scene for a long time is a lot of people go, they go into a kind of heart space, you know. Yeah. But it's very much the heart and the mind. I've written about this before in my books. Mm. And now actually I'm, I've been back recently kind of getting back into Kabbalah again, the mystical Judeo-Christian thing. And they also talk about it in some places. And so they get this kind of heart mind circuit open and then they always need to be in a very rarefied condition with other loving heart mind people and that and they can't easily so much be in the world. They have to shut down when the world men come into their thing. And to me, that's because there's a fundamental disconnect between the gut and the, and the, and the upper parts of the body, you know, and it, it, I think for some people it's natural because if you've lived in this rigid, rigid mind world and you discover the heart, it is so it's, it is so intense and so <laughs> joyful. You know, you just think, my God, this is all I need. And I've been all my life in like a little robot. And now I'm in this state of presence with people, you know. And so it's completely revelationary. It, it takes the whole psyche over, you know. But then there can come a phase where you, you are just in this kind of heart mind thing and you actually need to go deeper and start to access the gut. You know, what typically happens to people who are super really pushing from the heart mind space is they start to encounter a lot of negativity and problems in life because in a sense, life is trying to drag them deeper. At first, it's very, very blissful. And then as you start to open more, some people will just hold it in a kind of, you know, a lightweight sort of way you know they're just in this heart mind thing and they're not really deepening anything but if you deepen from the heart level the shit will come because it is opening up the it's like pandora's box you know it's opening up this box where all the crap is inside and it starts to come up and you start to find yourself you know being attracted into situations which are more destructive but you can't like you can't avoid it because it's trying to pull you deeper you know, the universe on some level is always trying to pull us deeper. And, and what's deeper about being in the gut compared to the heart? What's... It's like you have to clear more layers of, you know, holding and trauma and repression out to get there. For some people, not everybody, for some people, the heart is relatively easy, you mm. know, when they're in this heart-mind thing. But, but you can tell that they have not... You know, they can be very beautiful and loving around a specific group of people that they trust, but they can't easily do that out in the world at all because they have no gut and they're very easily spun off off their center. I and mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But of course, ideally, you want to travel down to the gut, but then you have to really dig into all this early childhood shit that we carry around, all of this repression. You have to dig into it slowly. And it's like you're wading through this dark, muddy stuff inside between your heart and your gut until you can get into the gut more. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel there is uh, some of the things that um, came to my mind is gravity, because you mentioned something, you know, the universe pulls you down and that actually this sense of gravity. And what I find is this, separation in, in between it's not easy to connect the heart with the belly that's what i'm finding on myself and the current state of things mm. 
and I feel them like they're a bit separate and a bit pulling in different directions. Mm. Um, still haven't <laughs> tried, haven't understood what what's happening, but um, I definitely feel there is a force that brings everything down mm. and, um, to some extent. Probably even going through the mind was trying to contrast this force as if you know I was yeah yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's essentially like most of the things I wanted to ask you that were around again, use maybe I just just repeat some of the things so so that's also helpful. Um well, breath works you mentioned more more as a you know non they like non conscious experience that maybe uh, we can get you through alter state of consciousness might 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 be better to use bioenergetics first which it's used depends a bit on the character's type um different type of intervention one thing is stress release the other thing is having the intention and the discipline to go deeper and actually do investigate this inner world um and then you know now we were talking about this seems maybe a bit abstract relationship between heart and belly um yeah so this is what i'm getting out of our conversation and yeah mm. thanks <laughs> oh, cool cool of you it's nice to have a chat you know and talk about this stuff <laughs> yeah yeah sometimes i don't know if i bring up too much of my personal stuff it can be helpful for others but you know i just did <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I'm the same. Sometimes I'm getting a bit too negative about the heart and I have to feel my heart more, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah. Cool, Livio. Thanks. Thank, thank you so much for um, going for it. And I think there's some useful information for people in this in this video. And we'll leave, um, you know, links to your work in the description below. Thank you. <laughs>